In the late 1980s, a freight train rolled through the English countryside carrying something that would reshape European railroading for the next two decades. The locomotive pulling that consist wasn't built in Derby or Doncaster. It came from London, Ontario, where General Motors' Electromotive Division had assembled the locomotive that became the Class 59. Foster Yeoman, a quarry company moving aggregate from Somerset to London, had grown frustrated with British Rail's fleet. British Rail's mixed aging freight fleet struggled for availability on heavy stone duty, so Foster Yeoman did something radical for the era. They bought American. So what happened to the booming European market that continues to haunt EMD to this day? The Class 59 packed EMD's proven 16-cylinder 645 two-stroke into a UK gauge package. At 3,300 horsepower, it outmuscled anything British Rail operated. Its two-stroke design delivered maximum power from minimum displacement, crucial for fitting serious horsepower into European clearance restrictions. More importantly, it stayed in service. The difference lay in design philosophy. British locomotives prioritized accessibility. Every component could be reached for maintenance. But accessibility meant complexity. The Class 59 buried its components but built them to last. Foster Yeoman's success caught attention across Britain. ARC ordered their own Class 59s in 1990. Then Mendip Rail followed in 1994. Each operator reported the same story. American reliability in a European package. The 645 engines proved remarkably durable in European service, far exceeding the intervals of contemporary British designs. But EMD wasn't satisfied with niche success. They wanted the entire British freight market, which privatization had opened to competition in 1994 for the first time in decades. In 1998, English, Welsh, and Scottish Railway took delivery of the first Class 66. EMD had refined their formula based on a decade of Class 59 experience. The 66 kept the proven two-stroke 12-cylinder 710 and added modern controls. Microprocessor management tightened fueling and traction performance, improving reliability and day-to-day -day efficiency over the 59. The frame was lengthened for more fuel and better weight distribution and cooling capacity was uprated for Britain's grades and schedules. Most importantly, EMD standardized the package. Same prime mover, alternator, traction gear, and controls across the fleet. A driver qualified on one could run any other. Maintenance procedures unified, and part stocking got simple. When Freightliner ordered 120 Class 66s in 1999, they weren't just buying locomotives, they were buying into a system. The order represented one of the largest single locomotive purchases in British freight. EMD's London, Ontario facility tooled up for European production, establishing dedicated assembly lines for the narrower loading gauge requirements. The orders kept coming. DB Schenker wanted 40 units for their German operations in 2001. The Class 66 was adapted to meet mainland European requirements, while providing power levels previously available only from much larger locomotives. GBRF ordered 18 units in 2004. Even passenger operator Northern Rail bought Class 66s for their infrastructure trains, valuing reliability over the higher speeds their passenger fleet required. By 2010, more than 400 Class 66s worked across Britain and continental Europe, with operator-specific fits for national safety systems and duties. EMD had cracked the code. European operators valued reliability above raw power. They preferred proven technology over cutting-edge features. The Class 66's two-stroke 710 engine, fundamentally unchanged since the 1980s, delivered exactly what customers wanted. Predictable performance and minimal downtime. The locomotives achieved industry-leading reliability that justified premium pricing. But success bred complacency. While EMD focused on building more Class 66s, European regulators were writing new rules that would challenge everything the locomotive represented. As standards tightened, fitting full after-treatment inside the UK loading gauge forced hard trade-offs in weight, range, heat rejection, and access. EMD's engineers faced a constraint box that would define the next decade. 
The Class 66's success came from its compact packaging within British loading gauges. At 12 feet 9 inches tall and 8 feet 8 inches wide, it maximized power within tight clearances. The locomotive's 70-foot length was already pushing limits at many European terminals, but those same clearances created mounting pressure as environmental standards evolved. Modern aftertreatment needed real volume and cooling headroom, and every added system took space that the 66's tight frame did not easily spare. Every addition consumed precious volume and weight. Its operating weight was already optimized for maximum axle loading within European limits. EMD chose to retrofit rather than redesign. They added exhaust after treatment to new Class 66s and offered upgrade kits for existing units. The modifications worked, but at a cost. Fuel consumption increased by 3 to 5 percent. Maintenance intervals shortened as after treatment systems required regular service. The elegant simplicity that made the Class 66 attractive began disappearing under layers of emissions equipment. Meanwhile, rivals offered clean-sheet, four-stroke designs with emissions hardware baked in, not bolted on. These weren't just cleaner locomotives. They were designed from the ground up for European operations. They met local crash standards, incorporated European train control systems, and used metric components throughout. The Class 66, for all its reliability, remained fundamentally an American design adapted for European use. The first cracks in EMD's dominance appeared around 2012. Direct Rail Services, a longtime Class 66 operator with 45 units in their fleet, began evaluating alternatives for new intermodal services. DB Schenker started trials with competing designs on their German freight corridors, attracted by newer locomotives' higher speed capabilities and lower operating costs. Even Freightliner, EMD's biggest European customer with over 100 Class 66s, began diversifying their fleet with non-EMD power. Their 2013 order for non-EMD locomotives marked the first time since 1998 that Freightliner had purchased alternative traction. The shift wasn't driven by Class 66 failures. The locomotives continued delivering industry-leading reliability. Instead, operators were hedging against future regulatory changes and exploring new capabilities. The shift wasn't dramatic. Class 66s continued working their established routes with impressive reliability. Availability rates remained high even as the fleet aged. Operators appreciated their proven performance and extensive parts networks. EMD's European Parts Distribution Center maintained substantial inventory, ensuring rapid component delivery across the continent. But when it came time to expand fleets or replace aging units, more evaluation slots went to competitors. Procurement cycles began favoring designs with compliance baked in, and training and parts support started to spread across multiple platforms. Parts inventories diversified as well. The economies of scale that made the Class 66 attractive started eroding as fleets became more heterogeneous. Instead of ordering 710 engine components in bulk, operators maintained smaller inventories across multiple engine types. Maintenance facilities that had specialized in EMD technology began developing expertise in other power plants. Policy pressure accelerated the trend. The European Union's Clean Air Program, launched in 2013, pushed for lower emission transport across all modes. Rail operators faced increasing scrutiny over their environmental impact, particularly in urban areas where freight trains shared tracks with passenger services. Cities like London and Paris began considering low-emission zones that could restrict older locomotives. Hybrid and bimode locomotives, once experimental curiosities, began appearing in serious fleet plans. These technologies offered operational flexibility that pure diesel locomotives couldn't match, allowing zero-emission operation in sensitive areas while maintaining range on non-electrified routes. The EMD responded with incremental improvements. They offered more efficient fuel injection systems, improved after-treatment, and better engine management software. The upgraded systems provided real-time emissions monitoring and adaptive control strategies that optimized performance across varying operating conditions. But these were evolutionary changes to a fundamentally 1980s design. 
The 710 engine's basic architecture, bore, stroke, and firing order remained unchanged from its introduction in 1985. Competitors were offering revolutionary alternatives with modern four-stroke engines, hybrid systems, and digital integration that the Class 66 couldn't match without complete redesign. The Class 66's two-stroke 710 engine, once its greatest strength, became a liability. Modern four-stroke engines offered better fuel economy, lower emissions, and easier maintenance. They integrated more naturally with hybrid systems and alternative fuels. The technological tide was turning against EMD's core technology, developed for a different era of railroading. Still, the Class 66 soldiered on. Its reliability remained unmatched in European service. Operators knew its quirks and capabilities intimately. The extensive parts network meant repairs happened quickly. Critical for freight operations where locomotive failures could disrupt entire supply chains. For existing services, the Class 66 remained the logical choice. But new orders slowed to a trickle. Between 2010 and 2015, EMD delivered fewer than 50 new Class 66s to European customers, compared to 200-plus units between 2005 and 2010. The pipeline was drying up as operators postponed fleet renewals and explored alternatives. The shift accelerated as operators discovered benefits beyond emissions compliance. Modern locomotives offered better fuel economy, typically 10 to 15% improvement over Class 66 consumption rates. Reduced maintenance costs came from longer service intervals and simplified diagnostics. Improved driver ergonomics reduced fatigue and enhanced safety on long-distance runs. Digital systems provided real-time diagnostics and predictive maintenance capabilities that the 66's analog systems couldn't match. Modern locomotives transmitted performance data continuously, allowing operators to optimize maintenance schedules and prevent failures. Condition monitoring predicted component failures weeks in advance. Features that seemed unnecessary on reliable 66s became competitive advantages on newer designs. Remote diagnostics reduced service calls. Predictive maintenance prevented unexpected failures. Digital integration with fleet management systems optimized locomotive utilization across entire networks. Training programs reflected the change. New locomotive engineers learned multiple platforms rather than specializing in Class 66 operations. Training centers expanded beyond EMD technology to include multiple manufacturers. The deep institutional knowledge of operations that had been a competitive advantage began fragmenting across multiple technologies. Maintenance crews developed expertise in four-stroke engines and hybrid systems. The specialized skills needed for 710 engine overhauls became less valuable as fleets diversified. Workshops that had focused exclusively on EMD technology started handling multiple locomotive types, diluting their Class 66 expertise. Customer ecosystems began migrating to rival platforms. Freightliner started standardizing on alternative locomotives for new services. GB Rail Freight began diversifying into other manufacturers' power, reducing their dependence on Class 66 availability. Even aggregate haulers EMD's original European market began evaluating alternatives. The economies of scale that had made maintenance so cost-effective gradually eroded. The customer relationships that took decades to build were quietly transferring to competitors who maintained European market presence through the regulatory transition. EMD found itself caught in a strategic trap. Developing a clean-sheet European locomotive would require massive investment with uncertain returns. The market had already moved toward established competitors with proven compliance designs. Retrofitting the Class 66 for evolving emission standards produced increasingly uncompetitive products that satisfied neither cost nor performance requirements. The company chose to focus on North American markets where the 66's underlying technology remained viable. Different emission standards and timelines meant the 710 engine continued powering new EMD designs for domestic customers, including the SD70ACE and F125 locomotives. But European ambitions were quietly shelved. Engineering attention shifted to North American compliance requirements. 
Resources that might have developed a European successor to the Class 66 instead went toward meeting domestic regulatory demands. The technological divergence between American and European rail markets, always present, became a chasm. Meanwhile, the existing fleet continued operating with impressive reliability. Operators who had invested heavily in EMD technology weren't about to abandon functional locomotives. The units built in the early 2000s still had decades of service life remaining. Parts remained available through EMD's established distribution network. Crews stayed qualified, and the locomotives kept earning revenue. Availability rates remained above 80%, even as the fleet aged past its original 20-year design life. The 710 engines proved remarkably durable, with many units exceeding substantial mileage without major overhauls. This longevity, once a selling point, became a strategic liability as it delayed fleet renewal cycles that might have generated new orders. Then Stage 3B hit. Stage 3B was the European Union's next emission step for diesel locomotives and other non-road engines, and it demanded steep cuts in nitrogen oxides and particulate matter beyond Stage 3A. In practice, it required modern after-treatment, typically diesel particulate filters and selective catalytic reduction, to be packaged inside the existing locomotive envelope. In the UK form factor, a compliant 710-powered Class 66 didn't pencil out. New 66 orders ceased. The last UK units arrived in 2016. The franchise froze. Renewal cycles migrated to rivals. And once training, spares and financing moved, they didn't swing back. Meeting Stage 3B with a 710-powered Class 66 would require massive after-treatment systems that consumed precious internal volume and added substantial weight. That weight had to come from somewhere. Reducing fuel capacity cut operating range, unacceptable for long-distance freight services. Eliminating ballast reduced adhesion. Removing structural elements compromised crashworthiness. Requiring expensive recertification for European safety standards. The economics didn't work either. A Stage 3B compliant Class 66 would cost 40% more than the original design while offering no performance advantages. The after-treatment systems required diesel exhaust fluid, adding thousands annually to operating costs per locomotive. Maintenance costs would increase due to complex after-treatment systems requiring specialized service. European customers already evaluating alternatives saw little reason to pay premium prices for outdated technology wrapped in emissions equipment. The consequences rippled through EMD's European operations. Without new locomotive orders, the company's specialized European production capabilities were mothballed. The London, Ontario plant that had built the original Class 59s closed its European locomotive line in 2017. The facility had produced over 500 locomotives for European service since the late 1980s. The institutional knowledge of European railway requirements built over three decades dispersed as engineers moved to other projects. Freightliner, once EMD's showcase customer, standardized on alternative locomotives for new services. Th their 2018 order for bi-mode locomotives marked a strategic shift toward technology that EMD couldn't offer. GB Rail Freight diversified into other manufacturers' power. The customer relationships that took decades to build were quietly transferring to competitors who maintained European market presence through the regulatory transition. That's the true haunting of Europe's Class 66. Not a spectacular failure, but a slow-motion strategic defeat disguised as operational success. The locomotives still run, the customers still operate them, but the future belongs to someone else.